Hello everyone, we'll be starting a new video series and in this series we'll be learning about IV induction agents. Before we begin, let's briefly look into how the drugs used for general anesthesia is classified. General anesthetics are administered via two routes, inhalational and intravenous. Inhalational agents are either gas or volatile liquids. The inhalational agents are usually used for maintenance of anesthesia but can also be used for induction. Intravenous agents can be classified as rapid acting drugs which are used for anesthesia induction and slower acting drugs. The slower acting drugs are needed for amnesia like benzodiazepines and analgesia like fentanyl. Ketamine, a dissociative drug, provides hypnosis analgesia and amnesia and can be used for induction of anesthesia. We can also include muscle relaxant as a part of intravenous agent as it is a very important part of intubation. However, the discussion in this video will be limited to induction agents only. IV induction drugs are drugs which when given intravenously in an appropriate dose can cause rapid loss of consciousness. The rapidity of their onset is described as occurring within one arm brain circulation time which is the time taken for the drug to travel from the side of injection, usually the arm to the brain. All the induction agents have a very short one arm brain circulation time. We'll look into them when we discuss individual drugs. IV induction agents are used to start and maintain anesthesia. They can be used alone for short procedures or given as an infusion for longer procedures such as in total intravenous anesthesia. They are also used to provide sedation, especially in settings like ICU. The detailed discussion on pharmacokinetic principle of anesthesia drugs was done in a separate video. The link to the video is given here. <coughs> in this video, we'll simplify and take a look at what happens to the IV drug after its administration in peripheral vein. The first important point in the pharmacokinetic of IV drug is that the entirety of the drug is bioavailable as it does not have to be absorbed from the gut or is metabolized by liver unlike oral formulation. So the bioavailability of IV drugs is 100%. Once the drug enters the bloodstream, a percentage of drug is bound to plasma proteins and the rest is unbound. The unbound part is the pharmacologically active form of the drug. Only the unbound drug can cross cell membranes, reach target tissues and exert their therapeutic effects. The drug is carried in the venous blood to the right side of the heart and then to the left side through pulmonary circulation. From there, the drug is finally distributed to various tissues of the body including brain through systemic circulation. Through the systemic circulation, the anesthetic is delivered to various tissues with highly perfused organs like brain, heart, liver and kidneys receiving it quickly. The brain equilibrates quickly due to its high perfusion and lipid content resulting in rapid induction of anesthesia. Next, the muscle group which has moderate perfusion and capacity absorbs anesthetic more slowly but still contributes significantly to distribution. The fat group with its low perfusion but high capacity absorbs the anesthetic slowly and takes much longer to reach equilibrium. Finally, the vessel pore group which has very low perfusion absorbs the anesthetic minimally and plays a negligible role in initial distribution phase. Again, to get the thorough understanding of how the drug distributes, please watch my video on compartment model. The link is provided in the description. If we plot the tissue concentration of anesthetics against the time, we will get a graph like this with vessel rich group receiving the anesthetic faster than other tissue groups. Now at the conclusion of anesthesia, the anesthetic concentration in the blood decreases. When this happens, the concentration gradient reverses 
and the anesthetic begins to redistribute from the tissue back into the blood or plasma. The highly perfused tissue releases the anesthetic quickly due to their rapid equilibration with the blood. The muscle group releases the anesthetic at a moderate rate while the fat group with its high capacity and low perfusion releases the anesthetic very slowly often prolonging the recovery. This differential redistribution affects the duration and the offset of anesthesia with adipose tissue acting as a reservoir that delay the recovery. Another important concept that we need to know is about the volume of distribution which I have discussed in the general pharmacokinetic principle. Finally, the drug then passes along a concentration gradient from blood to the brain. The rate of this transfer is dependent on the number of factors like arterial concentration of unbound or free drug, the lipid solubility of drug and the degree of ionization. Unbound lipid soluble or unionized molecules crosses the blood-brain barrier the quickest. Once it penetrates CNS tissue, each drug acts at its specific receptors like GABA, NMDA or ACH receptor and exerts its effect. In our case, the effects can be hypnosis, sedation or pain relief. There are many properties that an ideal anesthetic should possess and I must say that no one agent possesses all these ideal characteristics. These properties can be grouped into physical, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic property. The table here outlines the characteristics or properties that an ideal anesthetic must possess. You can go through it as it is self-explanatory. Also, we will revisit these properties when we learn about individual induction drugs. The intravenous induction agents currently in use can be classified based on their chemical structure. These include barbiturates such as sodium thiopental and methoxyl, phenols like propofol, imidazole such as etomidate, phencyclidines like ketamine and benzodiazepines which include midazolam diazepam or lorazepam. They can also be classified based on the onset of action into rapidly acting and slow acting agents. A rapidly acting agent induces consciousness within one arm brain circulation time and includes thiopentone, propofol and etomidate. In contrast, slow acting agents which takes longer time than one arm brain circulation time includes ketamine and midazolam. Alright, that's all for this video. In our next video, we'll look at this individual induction agent starting with propofol. Thank you.